All right, welcome to our fourth Foundry tutorial. This is where we're going to do custom mapping. I've already loaded up our save the, the ship, save the USS Jamestown mission that I've been working in the past. Here's the space map that we created where you come in, you kill the space guy, you've got your asteroid field, we have the debris, and there's the Jamestown that we're going to rescue. Last time we talked about the uh, ground maps. We've talked about the different types of triggers, how they're affected, how they interact with your story panel, all sorts of fun goodness. We even looked at how to use triggers um, to turn on things, to make things appear, to make things disappear, how to use uh, triggers that are part of the mission, triggers that are optional, all sorts of fun things. Today we're going to look at what is quite possibly one of the most beneficial things. Uh, it's also at the same time one of the most frustrating. It's also um, one of the most time consuming things. And that is your custom ground mapping. So the way you do custom ground mapping, you'll create a map, switch it to outdoor. You can technically use indoor and use these dark spaces here. I've seen some do it where you create, you get like one of these ship interiors where it has um, uh, space outside and then you can use that to see stars if you want. I've never done that so I just stick to what I know using outdoor maps. We need to name it. We're going to call it the USS Jamestown Deck 5. Now you can use any of these ground maps here. I prefer personally scrolling down here and using desert clearing. What you're after is something relatively flat. You don't want big hills, you don't want big mountains, you don't want big tall structures. Also you want to be careful of some of the maps. I would recommend staying away from like Pajem, um, Vulcan, any of the obviously named ones simply because they tend to have lower altitudes and you're going to want that elevation. And I'll show you why in just a second. So again, we're going to go with Desert Clearing. We've got our name, and we're going to hit Create. Using my middle, my scroll wheel, I'm going to scroll out and then hold down the scroll wheel and drag. And here's our big flat map. Here's our spawn point. Notice number 52. That's going to be important to us in a little bit. The other thing that you're going to need to notice is down here at the bottom. As talked about before, you have your X, Y and Z. Your ter Y is relative to terrain. You have terrain, geometry, zero altitude, legacy terrain, and legacy geometry, as well as the rotation. Now I've already turned off that snap to grid that I've talked about in the past that annoys me. I've turned out the turned off the waypoints and but I've left on the snap to grid. So let's look at how you do the custom mapping. So what we're going to do is go into our Details tab, and first we need a ground. A great way to search for the available grounds, you want something nice and big. If you type in the number 500, I'm going to go and grab here and drag it out. Here are all these big platforms that you can use. Generally in the past, I've just used one of these building blocks. Building block platform 500 by 501 is this brownish stone. You've got this other one here, it's kind of a grayish stone. And this one is kind of more gray tile. Recently, they've given us these new things. Federation carpet, gray blue, uh, gray and blue, so pretty, red, tan, uh, rubber. These foundation blocks, they're like the building block platforms up above, just really thick. Look at the sides of that, as opposed to the sides of this, and these new ones are even the thinnest of all. We have foundation walls, those are just huge and thin, but here are the Klingon ones, Romulan ones, and even water ones. I haven't played with the water, I'll be playing with that in the near future. We're just going to stick with something nice and easy for the time being, and use the Building block platform 500 by 500 03. Why not the Federation carpets? 
We could, I've used this more often, the math is easier, and I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to drag this out here, somewhere in the middle for now. And what we want to do is set the Y. I normally pick 100. Now we'll need to set terrain to zero altitude. That means ignore the rocks, ignore the hills. I want it to be literally 100 of meters, I think is what the measurement here is, above the ground. We'll take our little spawn point. Notice its number is 52. The building platform is 54. When I drag my spawn point over here, now you can't see it. Oh, it's still there. You can still mouse over it and click it. You can still get to it from the side. It's just you can't see it. As I've mentioned in the past, the higher your number, that will be what is seen if the objects overlap. So the building platform overlaps the spawn point. It has the higher number, so that's what you see on your map. We're going to click our spawn point. Now we want to set this to 100.9. That point .9 is key. Most of the things that you use, you will be setting point .9 higher than your building block platforms. Again, we'll change this to zero altitude. And let's hit play map and see what we have. Now, I've actually created a notepad, so just a simple text file with a bunch of the math that I have learned. Some of it has come from uh, some individual uh, YouTube videos that I have seen. Uh, there are some people from Starbase UGC who's done some great videos, some great tutorials. Uh, from that, I have started my custom mapping and got some of the math from them. I've actually discovered my own maps, my own math since then, and I've added to it. But here we are, standing up here on our platform. Unfortunately, one of our bridge officers didn't quite make it and is currently falling. I'm going to run to the edge. And you'll see at 100 meters, we're well and above everything. We don't have to worry about things. So let's go back into our editor, and now we need some walls. So I'll just type in the word wall here. Oh, there's a bunch of different types. There's these stone looking walls. You have different widths. Corner walls. Cave walls if you're making caves. Consoles that fit against the wall. We're going to just roll all the past them. Crates, decoration, monitors. Okay, some of the new ones. All the new things that they've put in, well, most of the new things have ESD in front of them. A lot of the new props. Foundation walls, we're going to ignore them. What we want, way down at the bottom, actually starts with the word wall. And we're going to pass the doors for now. And look down here, we have a wall generic, that's a rock. There's another rock. But here's this metal wall. It's not what we want for our ship, so let's look at generic ship one. That'd be more for doing like a Klingon or a generic. Here's another generic. That is our Federation wall. So we're going to drag our Federation wall out here. Now I'm going to look at my map, my math for generic ship zero three. We want to set it 0.24 below the rest of this. So our floor was 100. We're going to subtract 0.24 from that. So it's 99, oops, not that many nines, 99.76. Hit enter. Now I purposely did something wrong to show you. I'm going to hit play map. You notice I left this y relative to terrain. You will find as you're building things, you will from time to time forget to change your y relative. And suddenly the wall or the 
chair or the person you expected to be there isn't there. Because now, this is not setting it at 100 or 99.76 meters. It's setting it as 99.76 meters from the terrain. Now here, because the terrain is relatively flat, it still worked out pretty well. But we're going to switch it back to relative to zero altitude and come back in. If you remember, these little lights were right on the floor. We'll notice as we load in this time, the lights will be a little higher. Of course I have Ripley's loading, loading, going through my head at the moment. There's our wall. Notice this time it's a little bit higher. Now because we picked a relatively flat map, we don't have much of a difference, but that's still enough of a difference that it's going to be noticeable. I mean, it's a difference of, you know, up to my character's knees. So if you're trying to place a console on the floor, and now you suddenly forgot to set your uh, terrain, your Y relative, you're going to have it sitting there floating above the floor. The more variable your ground map is, the greater that error is going to become. I just want to go back in, zoom in, and here's our floor. And generally when I'm building, I like to use simple numbers, so I'm going to just make this exactly 306, this one exactly 287. Now we're going to make wall next to wall. Now also when I'm doing custom mapping, not only do I have my notepad open, but I also have my uh, calculator going at the same time. I do custom mapping with math. So that's pretty much how I do things. We're going to take our wall, duplicate it, and I'm going to leave it alone for now. What I'm going to do is come back to this first wall and take that 306 and put it into my calculator. Now what is the offset? The offset for the generic ship 03 wall is plus or minus 9.2. Since I'm moving it horizontally, that's to my left and right as I'm looking on the screen, that's the x-axis. Since I'm moving it to the right, that's plus. So I'm going to take that 306, add to it 9.2, and that gives me 315.2. I'll copy that number, and I'm going to change this here to our 315.2, hit enter, and there's our walls. Now you really can't eyeball this. You might be tempted to just say, well, why don't I line this up, or why do I line this up? And I will go into the foundry now and show you, but first, just to make our life easier, I'm going to move my spawn point so I don't have to run to what I'm looking at. So in this case, again, remember, we just eyeballed it, lining up those marks here. And as we come in, well, why aren't the walls lined up? Here's the reason. If you recall, the editor is top down. What you're seeing is not this wall. You're seeing this wall. That's why it becomes very difficult in the foundry to line up by sight because you're in a top-down view and we're trying to line up the bottom pieces. Also, to make it more interesting, these top units are beveled. They angle out. So I'm going to go back to our editor, 
and we're going to put that 13.52 back in. I'm going to fix my Z to back to the 287. So now they line up. So here's our overlap. Pretty significant from the top down view. We've got some clipping going on, so the math is obviously not exactly correct. Normally what I would do is go through and fiddle with this, move it, keep moving it, and getting it to line up perfectly. I'm going to check my data to see if it's maybe a different number. According to that, the 9.2 should have worked, so we're not going to sit down and fiddle with that right now. What you can do to fix clipping like that is we're going to change our Z to 0 0.001. Now again, if this is 287 meters, this is uh, decameter, centimeter, one millimeter. We're talking one millimeter difference. We've all set this. It's going to not be enough to be perceptible to the human eye as the person's running down the line. They're not going to think, hey, wow, look, these walls don't line up at all. But that little bit of difference will prevent that clipping that you've seen. So as you can see, wall looks nice and flat, clipping's gone, you're not getting any of that texture conflicting with it. Not only do you need to do that on your wall pieces, but what if you wanted two floors side by side? For the floors, we're going to adjust it by 91.44. So I've already copied my X coordinate, go to my calculator, Add 91.44, copy, that's 400.89, duplicate, take the new one, move it over. Now it's, notice here, you can still see some of the orange through it, that's going to be fine, but this still gets you a little bit of clipping, so just to make sure, this time we're not going to move left, right, X, Y, or up and down, Z, we're going to actually physically change the altitude by 0 0.001. So I move my spawn point right over that edge, that seam. And there's our seam. No clipping, looks level. There are walls working great. So we'll go back to our editor. So at this point, we've got the basics of setting down floors, setting walls. How would you do a roof? Same thing, but instead of putting it, let's put our spawn point back here. What we're going to do for our roof. For, you have a couple ways you can do the roof. We're going to set it 0.8, we're gonna, sorry, a full 8 up, so 108. And we're going to put it at the exact x, y, z coordinates.
here we are. We've got our floor. We've got our walls. We got our roof. You could even scoot that roof down a little bit more, raise it up a little bit. I wouldn't recommend going too much higher, but you've got a pretty nice start, basic of what you're going to be doing on your maps. The problem, of course, is by putting on the roof last, I, I can't see anything. You can't see anything that you're doing because of the number. Again, it is 57, and everything else is a lower number. So a couple, a trick to work on that. Let's actually get rid of our roof for now. We'll get rid of our walls again. Now, actually, if I was going to be building a custom map, the first thing I do is take these floor pieces and cover the entire map. That way, when somebody looks at the mini map, they don't see my little floor and walls with this big. Um, desert clearing underneath it. I'm not going to worry about that today. But what I've learned to do is actually set the roof first. So we're going to set this one to our 8. Have the exact XYZ coordinates now as I put my floor in place, we'll go back to 310, 286, 100, actually remember that was 99.76, train to zero. Now my wall is between the floor and the roof. In fact, we can even go back and call this one floor. Go back and call this roof, which oddly enough does help out later. But even though our floor is below them, between them, really, we can still see it on my overhead map because its number is 56. It's the highest number now therefore it shines through. It's actually a little trick that I learned actually just the last few maps ago. Put your floor down, put your roof down, and then start building your walls. Even if you don't know how high your roof is, even if you put your roof at 200 meters up, doesn't matter. It lets you see everything as you're building. It makes your life a whole lot easier. Do you know when I'm building a, a map, oddly enough, I, I tend to maybe build the first wall sometimes, but generally I want to start by building the room. So let's get some consoles. What type of room do we want to build first? Where are you going to beam in? Let's say uh, you beam in to a cargo hold. So let's find some crates. So here's some Romulan crates. Those are not the right crates we want. Let's see if we can find some good... Let's see, civilian crates. Let's find some maybe large. So we'll throw some crates down here. Set our zero altitude. Let's maybe throw some more crates. Here, don't forget to set your height. Let's even see if we can find one of those. Can't remember the name of it. Let's see. Uh, Yeah, we'll put a cargo lift in here, just for the fun of it. This will actually set up a little bit higher. The idea it's floating above the ground. We'll move our spawn point in here. Let's see how everything looks.
The reason I like starting off by putting what's going to be in the room. So if I'm building a sick bay, I start putting in the beds, put the figure out what consoles I want, figure out what wall pieces I want. Uh, if I'm making a, a, someone's quarters, put the bed, put a little uh, table, put, you know, whatever, your replicator. I like doing that. Then I know how big my room, room is going to be, and I can lay out the walls around it. Once I lay out the walls around it, then I can readjust the items in the room. All the crates are sitting nicely on the floor. Well, except this one over here, so we're going to have to figure out why. Most likely didn't set the altitude. Here's this nice floating above the ground, just like we like it. So there we go. Let's check here. Yep, didn't set our zero altitude. Now it'll work fine. So now we have our beam and point. What you would do then is build your wall all the way around it. Just for time and brevity's sake, we're just going to build the front wall. And what we want is the door so we can leave the room. There's a whole bunch of doors. Blue ones, orange ones. They all work pretty much the same. Except this first one. If you notice, it's gray, and all the other ones had a color. The reason this one doesn't open, all the others do. If you notice, door opens and closes, door opens and closes, yada yada blah blah, wall with door. Door doesn't move, door doesn't open. So we want them to actually be able to leave. Let's put a nice orangey yellow door in there. We're going to have to rotate it. And for our door, let's find, we want this to be 100.99, set to zero geometry. Now for right now, I'm going to actually move it out of the way. I'll show you why in just a second. Let's take and make three walls here. So we have our 305 plus 9.2 and then we'll do that one more time so now we have three walls I'm going to take this one and just duplicate the whole wall Stick it over there for now. I want them to line up, so I'm going to take my see my 305. I'm going to select them. The last one I pick, I'll put the 305, so now they line up. I'm not so worried about how far apart they are from each other. I'm going to get rid of this wall. That 13.42 is what I use for here. And my 311.858. Uh, I hit the Control C instead of Control V, so I need to go grab that number again. What I'm doing is Control C to copy, Control V to paste. There's our wall. I'm also going to take this guy and offset it by that point 0.1 so we lose our clipping. And let's see how this looks. Again, my spawn point is right in here. And let's play our map. All right, here we've beamed into the cargo room. Again, you'd want to build the walls around it. We run to our door, which opens, and now we're in our hallway.
and we can proceed to go whichever way you're going to go. One nice thing that you can do as you're building your hall, as you're building, let's repurpose this generic ship 03. So we're going to come down here, click on this button, type in door. Remember door 01 doesn't actually open or close. We're going to use that one. Rotate around. Now the benefit of doing that is we're giving the illusion that our ship is bigger than it really is. It's kind of odd when you build a custom map. You're building an entire deck of the USS Jamestown, whatever ship we made that in a couple of weeks ago, and all it has is three rooms. The three, you know, you have what the cargo room. Let's say you build a sick bay down there, or an engine room, or it, it just has three, four rooms, and it stopped, dead ends. That's not a realistic deck. So what you'd want to do is put doors that don't go anywhere that gives the impression of this being a bigger deck, I just can't get to it because some doors are locked or whatever. So let's make ourselves a right angle here. This next one used to be 332.6. I'm going to duplicate it again, rotate it. Generally what I find is, oh, we want to do that off one. You notice I generally have all of my um, horizontal, the, the walls running left, right, being facing one direction, whether it's facing up with a little arrow or facing down. I don't like mixing them. Um, I don't know if it really does anything, it's just maybe a, more of a personal quirk than anything else. So to do our 90 degree, let's pull up our math for that. Alright, to do a corner, we're going to want 4.52. So let's see how that looks. So we take our 33.26. We're going to add to it our 4.52, copy that, put that for our new x value. Z, we're going to do the same, but we'll take our z value plus our 4.52, and that goes there. So let's take a look at our corner and make sure we got the, there's different types, there's different math you can use for your corners, so we're just going to make sure it looks okay. As you can see, this is a lot of, this is why custom mapping takes so long. You place a couple things, you go look at it. You place something else, you go look at it. In fact, sometimes if I am know I'm going to be doing a lot of hallways, as soon as I can I build a four-way intersection, even if I never am going to use a four-way junction, a plus junction, because now I have all of my angles that I'm ever going to use, and I just copy and paste them into place. I don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. That looks like a pretty decent angle there. Let's run around the corner and see back from the other side. Yep, I always like to make sure it looks pretty decent on the other side. There's a little oddity here, so again, I would probably go in there and play with that and get that number a little bit better. But for the sake of this, I'm not going to worry about it. Now notice we still haven't wondered how wide this hallway is yet. We've not set our Z, so that's been on purpose. Actually, let's go ahead and adjust that after all, because we're going to need the other side of that corner here. So let's instead I'll show you what I mean by the other side of the corner. 
We're going to take those original numbers and let's try 4.447 instead. Here's kind of another little trick that you can do. We talked about copying. We're just going to copy this whole corner. We're going to copy that X coordinate out. Okay, what I did here is I went to this wall, copied the X coordinate, clicked on my copied vertical, my copied horizontal, left clicked on it, left control clicked. Now I'll just move this guy out of my way, use my Z. Notice I'm using this one because this we offset by the point 0.1. And now I have my corner using the exact same one. What do we do with this guy? Well, we'll just take him, rotate him, and this is how we're going to get this Z number here in just a second. So we're going to take this Z number, put it in there, plus our 9.2, copy it. That goes there. Use this X to set here, but this time the X will be off by the point 0.1. Now I can take this Z and select this whole thing, make this Z the same as this Z. Now I've got my hallway set. So they line up vertically and horizontally to each other. So as we go in and play it, Here's our wall. Corner looks nice and sharp and clean there from both inside and out with that change. Nice width to the hallway. Here you can see we forgot to set our zero altitude, so we do want to go ahead and change that. So as you can see, we've been 45 minutes or so now, and we've just set up one little hallway we started one little cargo hold but we really would need to go through and build all the walls around it or whatever um, so as you can see custom mapping takes a long time so oh that's right this uses a different wall one uses a different math uh, wall door one you want to set up 0.91 up so that would be fixed now. Anyway, so let's say you're going to come down here and you're going to build a sick bay or, or a mess hall that you're going to turn into a triage because maybe we're trying to retake the ship. Maybe down over here there's there's a, another room that you have to fight some enemies and up here you're going to create a whole hallway of bad guys with little rooms off to the side to rescue people. You're looking at all this detail, every wall, every floor, every box, every plant, every shelf you have to put in there. Why do we want to do that? Uh, the benefit, well obviously the, the negative of it is just the sheer amount of time and the, the precision that you need to get everything to line up correctly. Uh, part of the benefit, there's really two, the lesser of the two benefits is now everything becomes modifiable. So let's say you've got this wall. I'm not going to worry about the math right now. Just going to eyeball it. But let's say you've built a secret room over here, and you decide that you want this wall to have a trigger. 
So you're going to come in here and say, well, it's it going to become, it's going to start off visible, but it's going to become invisible when I do something to it, when I, uh, well, why don't we just make interact with the wall itself? So now if you interact with the wall itself, it'll become invisible. Or you can put an invisible object that they can blow up the wall. Or the wall actually never is there. It's actually a holographic emitter and, and they can come and cut the power or, or hack the console or whatever you want. And now the wall disappears and you've got this whole empty room. You can't do that using the pre-built maps. With the custom map, because you've placed everything, Everything from the floor to the ceiling to the walls to the plant becomes something you can have the player interact with, something that you can have react to the player. Uh, disappear, appear, show up, change. Uh, th the ultimate reason that I do this is I can then create my map to fit my story instead of having to pigeonhole my story into the map. I've decided that I want them to run to three different rooms before they hit a security room, which they have to get something to get past a force field. I build that map to be the three rooms, and then the security room, and then the force field. I build that. Uh, there are some limitations or some things we can't build very well in the foundry, um, but you work around and, and you find a way to either bypass or, or make a destroyed version of it or or whatever. So just the, the ability to create your map to fit your story. Uh, and that's really the primary reason I do custom mapping. It obviously takes a very long time. You have to be careful not to build too big because there is a size limit on the number of these detail objects. NPC contacts and NPC groups that you can use. A um, couple of the things as we get into the closing, you, we have not talked about these buildings, so don't forget as you're doing stuff, you have all of these building pieces. Bamboo, a hut. Why would there be a hut inside of a ship? Well, maybe you decide to build a, build a holodeck. You can do that. Make the ship disappear and the huts appear or whatever. Um, you can even take, oh, where do we want? Some of these buildings have doors on them. So let's say you want to use this door. Well, they can't, they can, you can stick it there and you can make it to where they can come up. It won't open and close. It would be just like this door. But obviously you'd have to be careful because it's a, going to be a much larger asset. I mean, so you're taking up that much room for a door, then you have to deal with these things. So, But I've done it before. I've seen other people do it. It's a great way to do an exterior door if you're building a uh, some type of building inside. Here's an easy door that you can use. You have that... Uh, I'm trying to mouse over the door. I'll just do that. You have that nice door, no exterior pieces to it that you can get to pretty easily. So pros and cons of, of the custom mapping, uh, it's a lot of tedious work trying to put things, uh, especially since some of the consoles, you decide you want to put two consoles back to back, you find out their origin points not in the center. So when you rotate them, now you have to move them along the X or the Z to get them to line up. Um, you have a limit on the door. Here's a Romulan door. It doesn't open or close. You know, Here's a Klingon door. It's way over there for some reason. Again, doesn't open or close. Same with the Cardassian. Same with the uh, generic. I mean, technically you could make it to where they can blow up the door or they come and the door disappears when they get close enough. Uh, I've not played with these just these openings. I'm not sure what they're for. Just a door in the middle of a nothing. I, again, I've not played with it. I don't know. But there's their, your introduction, if you will, to custom mapping. Our time has already gone, and we just have a little bit here, so you can see how time-consuming this can be. But once you get good at it, let me back out of here for a second and take you to one of the missions, I'm the most recent mission I'm working on, which has some of the most advanced custom mapping 
that I've done just to show you some of the possibilities and again the question we're going to be asking is where would you find these type of maps that I needed for this mission where would you find those in the pre-made you couldn't without custom mapping this mission actually it's going to become probably a trilogy of missions would be impossible to do Come on, little foundry, you can do it. You can't do it, right? Come on. Hey, here we go. So here I have... This is one I used a Vulcan map for. Um, but I'll just pull up and sp start the map so you can kind of see what's going on. As you can see, it's really clustered and cluttered in here uh, because, again, every piece that you see, I've had to put down. Now, you may be thinking, now I thought you said not to use the Vulcan ground map. The reason I'm recommending you not to use the Vulcan ground map, I used the Vulcan ground map. Uh, I wanted the Vulcan Sky and I thought they were connected. They're not. They're just in the backdrop here. You can change it to Vulcan Sky. So if I would have known that at the time, I would have just picked Desert Clearing again and thrown the Vulcan Sky on it. The problem, I've already reached the altitude, so I've actually had to sink things down a little bit and position uh, this museum that I've built so it's not hitting any of the mountains and peaks. So a little frustrating. But that's what mistakes are for, to help you learn for next time. So here you have, on planet Vulcan, you can look off into the distance and Created a false illusion of a city continuing. Here's some external, so you're actually outside, some external buildings. The map is not complete, but still in progress. These flames actually give off a little light. I've also put some other lights around. But here you have outdoor, running around outdoor, and here is indoor. You just run on in. There's no way to do that in a pre-made map. None of this exists that I need for this mission in a pre-made map. Even managed to do two stories. This is the first time I've done either two-story or indoor-outdoor map. But so here you see none of this. I mean, how would I run this mission that needs all of these different rooms, all of these different looks from Borg to Klingon to Romulan's packing? Couldn't do it. I built a doctor's clinic down here. Okay, this is where I've used one of those, an exterior building to give me a, a wall. But here we have a medical facility that I've created. Again, there's no way to get that. And the probably the craziest thing I've done so far, uh, this is a three-part map. There's going to be caves here, underground buildings here, and even lower buildings. So it's a three-tier map using three completely different types of engineering structures and, and math and all that sort of stuff. So the custom mapping gives you that ability. But from time to time, I'll just use... Here, I just needed an office, some dude sitting in a chair. I'm not creating an office for one dude sitting in a chair for you to talk to him. So again, I will use pre-made maps for offices or little things like that. 
So that's our time. I'm going to switch over to look at Twitch to see if any questions. Of course, if there is a time delay, me asking that and me hearing that is a little bit off, so just waiting to see if anything comes through. All right, so thank you very much for joining me. We'll hopefully do a another uh, Foundry tutorial mission. I'll see what questions are still out there from my folks from ANTKB, and maybe do another uh, few more missions to talk about some extra, or maybe some more advanced things. Thank you. This is Armand Falconer. I'll see you around.